Okay, so in Thunder Perfect Mind, we have kind of a neutral feminine type voice declaring herself, right? Or itself, right? Mm-hmm. And it continues with Why you who hate me do you love me and hate those who love me? You who deny me confess me. And you who confess me deny me. All right. You who tell the truth about me lie about me, right? And you who have lied about me tell the truth about me. You who know me be ignorant of me, you know? And those who have not known me let them know me, right? For I am knowledge and ignorance, right? I am shame and boldness. I am shameless. I am ashamed, right? I am strength and I am fear. Mm -hmm. I am war and peace. Right? Give heed to me. Mm -hmm. But what are these opposites? If God is good, right, all this is what? Good and evil. Good and evil. Mm -hmm. These are opposites. Either you know something or you're ignorant of it, right? Normally, right? right? Unless you're really lying, right? Do you understand what this voice is saying? What the man who ever wrote this particular excerpt from the Gnostic Gospels is saying, right? See, like you can teach from the Bible, you can teach from the Gnostic Gospels. But you gotta quote it. Mm -hmm. See, the problem is, like with the Bible, when it's quoted, right? <laughs> you got to try to understand what it's saying, right? Well, what this is showing you is opposites, right? Now, mm -hmm. the Gnostics talk of the serpent being wiser than the God who created the world. Mm -hmm. But in whose opinion, right? Satan's. Why do the Gnostics say this, though? They're trying to show you the two mindsets of the two different angels. One is warring against God, right? And trying to use us as hostages, right? right? When you start a campaign, right? To be different than good, what else can you be but evil? Uh, now, mm -hmm. well, good tells the truth only, you know. Good does all things, right? Good does not trick you or deceive you, right? Right? Mm hmm. But. <laughs> But that's what I meant, Mary Bell. Don't make me break up with you. <laughs> Don't make me cheat on you. Because mm -hmm. by the time I do, I'm going to be fed up with you and not going to want you back. <laughs> Myself, right? And you never want to be, so what's going to happen? You're going to do something crazy, you know? Perhaps with the child we had? Mm-hmm. That's what I'm worried about. Not myself, but what your crazy Vietnamese Filipino ass would do with our child. Mm -hmm. Whatever you are, whatever you are. You're the one acting like you're not content with our relationship, engaged to another man, trying to break it up with me, but won't, don't have the balls to really do it, right? Because you're liking the sex, too, right? Once in a while. Mm -hmm. But to you, it's like sex. I don't know. 
You're not even seeing it as a sin. <laughs> but I'm warning you, the Bible says two shall be one flesh. That is our marriage. Hello? You think a piece of paper <laughs> was given to Adam and Eve in Eden before they knew each other? Mm -hmm. Well, it's kind of obvious if you're the only two people there. I don't know, right? Two, two. If there's only a male and a female <laughs> who was taken out of him, right? And in him, right? To be taken out of him, right? Somehow, somehow. Right? <laughs> You want to pretend it wasn't physically, but okay. <laughs> even you, even if you somehow extract the X and double it in the female to make her XX, I know. And I told Dummy about this before, right? You're still taking that half of the male mm, to make the female mm, and doubling it in her, whereas he's Y and X, right? But that's if you don't take her out of him, right? Though you're not both ways. Yes, you are both ways. Right. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Except one, okay. John says Jesus has female breasts in Revelations, but Cethos in his gospel. Mm -hmm. Can you change that? Mm hmm from when you wrote the gospel to when you're on Patmos, yeah. You're the author of both books. <laughs> you are. Now, he talks also about a girdle. Mm -hmm. Now, what is a girdle? A belt. <laughs> a belt. Quite simply. Now, a girdle can have pockets sometimes. <laughs> you know, like a bra. Like a bra. But again, if you're wearing a girdle and John uses Thethos in his gospel and yet he's the last disciple on Patmos still alive, right? And he changes that word to Mastelis, right? And uses the Hebrew-Greek word <laughs> different than the other words. Now, one of the ways it's spelled in the Septuagint is M-A-S-T-O-U-S, right? Here he spells it M-A-T-M-A-S-T-O-I-S instead of U-S. But why? Because mm -hmm. the other way to spell it in the Hebrew translated into the Greek, <laughs> also called the Septuagint, is M A S T O I. Mm. Now, does that mean you can't deny it? No. You've been denying it. <laughs> That's what that means. King James, by using Paps, has more clarity than any other book out there calling itself the Bible. Mm. Because Paps is obviously female breast. <laughs> And so is Mastoids, right? In fact, the reason John inserted the I instead of the U is Mastoi mm, is what? Singular. <laughs> it means a suckling breast you breast one child with. Right? Uh, you feed one child with one breast at a time, right? In fact, that could be why Eve, if Satan was a hermaphrodite, and had Mastoids himself, right? Saw him as good for food. <laughs> no. To feed their young if she was to get impregnated by him. Do you understand? <laughs> the best of both worlds. Uh, oh. <laughs> Ever heard of that? <laughs> That's what she thought she would be getting if she had sex with Satan. First, first. Now, the serpent <laughs> is not the focal point. It's what she sees. But where is she in the location of the tree and how does she see the serpent, right? Moses don't tell you that detail. Is it on a branch? <laughs> is it about waist high <laughs> on a branch? Or appears like it's on a branch? <laughs> 
on the tree, on the tree. <laughs> or is it on the ground? <laughs> okay. No, wait a minute. <laughs> the serpent, they think, had legs. <laughs> Could it walk on all fours like another animal? Like a lizard? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Was it at one time a long lizard or something? They speculate because it has little nubs where legs might would be. <laughs> I know more than you want me to know. <laughs> way more, way more. I'm admitting what you can't admit. <laughs> there you are. Whole point. <laughs> now, listen as it continues. <laughs> I am the one who is disgraced and the great one, right? Why? Because Satan was at one time good, good. So who was this? Satan. Satan himself, right? Give heed to my poverty and my wealth, right? Do not be arrogant to me when I am cast out upon the earth. Who is that? Satan. Right. And you will find me in those that are to come, right? And do not look upon me on the dung heap, <laughs> nor go and leave me cast out. Mm -hmm. And you will find me in the kingdoms and do not look upon me when I am cast out among those who are disgraced and in the these places nor laugh at me and do not cast me out among those who are slain in violence so yeah mm -hmm. what is this idea telling you mm -hmm. It's double-mindedness, right? Shit. Listen again. I am the bride and the bridegroom. Right? And it is my husband who also begot me. Shit. I am the mother of my father and the sister of my husband and he is my offspring, right? I am the slave of him who prepared me. I am the ruler of my offspring. Uh, but he is the one who begot me before the time on a birthday. And he is my offspring in due time, right? And my power is from him, right? That's talking about what? Insemination. Insemination, right? I am the staff of his power in his youth. <laughs> and he is the rod of my old age, right? She's also blaming him for getting older. <laughs> and looking old. <laughs> right. Though when she was young and her heart was an open book. And his too. They used to say, live and let live. <laughs> right. <laughs> but now the Satan, you say, and literally die. Went to Axel there. <laughs> because of the difference between Paul's smooth voice and Axel's rock voice, right? <laughs> that's why too that's why too <laughs> that was for the James Bond movie I know <laughs> they will let that they will let that but see the one commodity that you know is hardest to control is the one you're trying to control the best. Music. Music. 
And why is that? You know how music works. So now you're really making it difficult, right? Not easier to do music because you're not allowing for imitation or impersonation. Even Green Day says no one sings like you anymore in current pop music. Right. Why is that? You're doing away with imitation, right? Or impersonation, right? Illegally against the knowledge of it that you can impersonate other people. If not so, Danny Carvey wouldn't have had a career. Mm -hmm. Nor Rich Little, nor Eddie Murphy, nor even John Belushi, who impersonated who? Joe Cocker. <laughs> but you're trying to what? Control the market. Like a fist gripping sand or mud, <laughs> you're trying to grip the entertainment world by force. By force. Because you don't allow for impersonations of music. I know you don't. It's almost like zero tolerance, which you cannot do in music. Because, see, I can teach you how to impersonate each other. Right. See, that's where you're messing up. <laughs> it's educational to teach impersonation. No, no, it is. It's educational to teach the notes of the music. Right. <laughs> and how to sing it. <laughs> so, and that's called practice, right? Two of the song, right? But if the artists don't have to practice, and this is what we're asking you, why do they sound different every time they sing their own song, right? Why can't they sing or imitate their own sounds, right? Usually, like I keep telling you about, row, row, row your boat, empty down the stream, barely, 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 life is but a dream. That's how you always sing it once that style of the song is established, right? I always sing the song that way, right? That's also called unison with my performance, right? Now, mm -hmm. the difference is they also think they're fake because of that, right? You can't sound the same. That's not normal with a normal singer. You can't even hear yourself to sound like yourself. <laughs> you can't even sing in unison with yourself. If you change one note of that song, you're varying it. You're trying to freestyle your own material, right? Why is that? You don't think they think it's you? <laughs> no, they don't think it's you because you are doing that. <laughs> Don't you understand what you're doing? You're violating musical law. I don't know. And that's why you can't do that. <laughs> Which is educational for musicians. Not just artists. Even if you edit your material together. When you create the final piece, right? Whatever you're playing at. When the song is done, that's how it's to be performed every time. Exactly the same. It's like a rock star. And, uh, you know, Mark's character is trying to make sure they play it. Spot on. Spot on. Just like the band would. <laughs> but why is that? That's how it works in music. Yeah, yeah. When you play Beethoven, right? Right? <clears throat> Whatever you play. Even Mary had a little lamp, Mary. You got to play it right correctly. But see, But see, what happened? Mm -hmm. I messed up. <laughs> but would that be considered a good performance or a bad one? A bad one. Right. 
Now, why do you think they're trying to control the seniors this much? They know they're going to mess up. They know they're going to mess up. They're human. Now, mm, you know I'm trying to play Pharaoh Jaka, or are you sleeping, right? right? But I also, what, messed up. But if you didn't know the original melody, you wouldn't know I messed up either, would you? No, no. If this is your first time hearing this song, you don't know nothing about it, right? <laughs> but if I'm going to play it correctly, I got to play it note by note, right? Here's a little song he wrote. You might want to sing it note for note, right? <laughs> so there I'm impersonating the male. I don't know if that's even his real name. But the man <laughs> who recorded this song, and I heard it on the radio. <laughs> to quote the person calling herself Irene Karen. <laughs> Don't know if that's not a non de plume either. either. <laughs> now that's called a flawless performance. No errors, no problems, right. <laughs> Okay, mm, that's what we mean. <laughs> when you sing a song, you got to match the radio. <laughs> if you don't, guess what I can do? Teach you how to match it on the radio. Educationally wise. And, uh, I'm wondering, well, why does Steve Perry sound different in Japan when he did that little video? <laughs> Than on the radio. <laughs> Why do you sound different, Steve? That's a reporter's question. Right? Another way you can do it is you're asking the artist, hey, why do you sound different on the radio versus here, right? That's a reporter's question, right? To the artist who's performing the song. Guess what? We can do that too. That's one of the Terms for fair use. Right? Then there's parody. Right? Well, parody, you kind of can change the words around to the song. Um, and what you're doing there is you're using the melody. Right? I like babies in the spring. This is from a song called I Like Sex and Candy. Yeah. Right. Mama, this surely is a dream to you. Right? You might have heard it. You might not. <laughs> I don't know what you heard, right? <laughs> But you can tell someone if you think they're wrong in your opinion, right? That also has to do with reporting, right? That also has to do with telling the truth or telling the lie. Mm. And what are you lying against? Music herself, you know, itself, right? You're not doing it how you're supposed to do it every time, right? Like I said, right? So that's the opening to Bette Midler's song, The Rose, right? <laughs> Yet you take it for granted that you don't even have to practice your own songs, right? When you freestyle it and sound different. 
I'm not saying you don't sound like you, but you don't sound like you on the radio. That's for damn sure, right? You're doing it so different. What's that about? Right. <laughs> that makes me ask you a reporter's question. What is that about that you don't sound like you do on the radio versus live, right? <laughs> Don't you realize when you sound different, <laughs> you're making us wonder how you're producing the song? Because, <laughs> see, most singers learn the melody and just sing the song repeatedly over and over again. Like, very well. <laughs> so, Mary had a little lamb, little lamb. No, this is my favorite lady, I'm sorry. <laughs> But I'm using the lyrics from Mary Had a Little Lamb, right? Mary had a little lamb, little lamb, little lamb. Mary had a little lamb, its seats was white as snow. Oh. <laughs> instead of My Fair Lady, instead of My Fair Lady. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Mm hmm. That's why I sung Sam's voices two different ways. I sung it with talk sing, but then I sung it if you were to be in a choir. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It would sound different then, right? Without any accents or mm, that's how he would sound too, right? So you really have two voices, right? Your talk sing voice and your professional singing voice or your choir singing voice, which has to do with no accents or no, mm -hmm, you just sing the that. <laughs> All right. Though it's been a while since I've done that, right? Mm -hmm. Only you can prevent forest fires. So again, right? If you want to sing like Sam Elliott, First, you got to know his voice, right? <laughs> from yours, from yours. <sighs> right. <laughs> now, mm -hmm. I saw Mommy kissing Santa Claus underneath the mistletoe last night. Now, that was towards the end of Little Toxie. But I started off almost without no accents or no voice, just the notes, right? I saw Bobby kissing Santa Claus underneath the mistletoe last night. She didn't see me creep down the stairs to take a peek. Okay, that's teaching, okay? How Sam's voice might, still use that word, could sound if he were to sing it note for note without any vocal interference from his speaking voice, right? Now, that's how we're taught to sing in choir. Mm -hmm. Even with we don't need no education when they bring in the children, we don't need no education. We don't need no force control. <laughs> or, uh... No dark sarcasm in the classroom. The jolly dead kids alone. Hey, teacher! Leave them kids alone. All in all, you'll just stay another brick in the wall. We don't need no education. We don't need no force control. You see, I'm doing it with a British-type accent there, right? 
No dark sarcasm in the classroom. That's kind of like Morris. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> I know what I mean. <laughs> Teacher, leave them kids alone. <laughs> Leave them kids alone. All in all, you'll just stay another brick in the wall. Right. <laughs> but you do need education on your ignorance. Herself itself. <laughs> Satan itself is ignorant of the truth. Satan doesn't want to know the truth, therefore he denies it, right? And lies about it, right? And confuses you, his followers, into accepting the lie over the truth, right? That's what happened with Eve, right? He knew Adam was lying when he said it's the tree in the middle of the garden she wasn't supposed to eat of. She wouldn't have to worry about that with the tree of life. It knew Adam and Eve were a couple. <laughs> if Satan wanting to throw the monkey wrench in, it's serpentine thing <laughs> on its body <laughs> that she thought was speaking to it, to her. <laughs> so, again, do you think a serpent can speak to someone in need? <laughs> or <laughs> did she misperceive Something that looked like a serpent on a tree limb. <laughs> About way <waist> high. <laughs> Near the fig tree. Near the fig tree. <laughs> Let's see something here, though. <laughs> what does a fig tree even look like? <laughs> Never thought of that. Hmm. This is what they kind of look like. So could Satan be standing? <laughs> okay, Eve is facing the fig tree. She sees a serpent somewhere around the limb area. Mm -hmm. You see how it is, right? <laughs> I know what you mean. Right? <laughs> right. So the fig tree is the focal point because 